Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. Welcome to Friday, the most excitingest day of the week. We're going to look at Carl Kopinski today. This is going to be actually a lot of fun. Um, I was trying to think of some high level drawing, you know, creators and, um, you know, again, kind of trying to stay in the line of the sketchbook idea, more spontaneous drawings and, um, Carl is really good. I mean, he's obviously got a connection to Kim Jong-gi and probably Tarada too. I don't, I don't know everything about, um, their relationships and stuff like that, but I've seen Carl actually draw with Kim at Comic-Con. They're, they're pretty much, uh, got really, really close to where my table is in our stally. If I kind of lean over, I can see them. And, uh, I've actually watched Carl and Kim draw, which is pretty neat. But yeah, let's get into this. So Carl Kapinski, phenomenal illustrator. He's got a very, very interesting line that he puts down with his work. And there's a lot that you can learn from looking at Carl's work. He's, he's probably one of the best illustrators working today. He's definitely in that top tier. Hugely popular on Instagram, so... I will have links to his social media, but more likely than not, most, well, you know what though, honestly, you can never tell. There may be people that have never seen his work before here. It's, it's, it's not that uncommon on my channel. He doesn't really work in comic books per se. So that, that could, um, be why you've never seen his work. I actually just read the ambassadors number one, right before I did this video, Mark Millar and Frank quietly. It was quite good. Um, was interesting is he used the theme in that story that I actually have in Blaster Kid. And if you saw my video yesterday and I said that, um, Tarada had some lettering that was kind of similar to not the letters weren't like my letters, but there was a style thing that he had going on that was similar. And I said that, you know, when you come up with, I mean, I, I had this idea for Blaster Kid for a couple of years, but seeing something similar used in Mark Millar's book, I actually think is a good thing. Cause that means that, I mean, Mark Millar is a great writer, so, you know, don't ever worry about, like, if you're doing art, drawing, and your work looks like a Carl Kopinski, or, you know, you've got little bits and pieces of other things, some of it's just natural. There's only so many ways to draw. There's only so many, you know, different story ideas that you can have, or plots and things like that, so don't, don't ever let it hold you back. Just kind of move forward and be true to yourself. And um, you'll do just fine. Wow, I've never seen this before. This is crazy. <laughs> oh my gosh. We won't even need gorillas in the future. That's the, the crazy thing. We'll just have robots just themselves. There we go. Yeah, I, I did a dry run of this video, and one thing that I had said in the other video that kind of stayed with me after I was done was there's <laughs> there's always great artists that are drawing at any given moment in time. With the internet, we're able to funnel all of that into popular artists that you see on Instagram. But there's enough of them out there that it it you know the quantity is is more in your face than it would have been. 20, 25 years ago, you'd hear about these artists, but it would be like, oh, there's this artist in, you know, Norway that draws really good, or there's this Korean artist that's really good. And, you know, you'd really have to hustle to like get their books. And, you know, it was, it was quite an effort to actually expose yourself to the work. And, um, now it's just up in your face and it's, competitive too the thing is is whether or not people want to admit it you know you're competing for people's attention so artists do different tricks and um you know they have gimmicks that they use to try to get people to check out their instagram or tiktok or youtube channels whatever it is whatever sort of gets their fan base growing and um that so it's it's interesting when you are showing sketches and art for people to hopefully encourage them to draw. 
seeing someone that draws as great as Carl and as, as popular as Carl can seem like an impossible goal to achieve with your own work, but you just have to stick to it. The thing with Carl is Carl's probably been drawing for 30 years and he works very, very hard at it and he's drawing all the time. He's constantly pushing himself and uh, I mean, you can just see the quantity of information that he has in his head from his sketches because he can draw so many different styles of things and designs of things and stuff like that. And you have to kind of work up to that. Your your mental, visual vocabulary may be limited right now, but it doesn't mean that it would always be. You can speak the human language, so or whatever language you speak. Not human language. You, you speak a language. American, English, you know, you may speak something else. But art is a language, too. Here's his pencil. It was funny. I, uh, in the other videos, I was um, trying to see it. I think I, I have a bunch of these. Alex Sinclair's daughter gave me a bunch of these pencils. If I'm not mistaken, it, it's probably a Blackwing. I don't know the exact one that he's using, but it looks a little like a Blackwing pencil. may not be. We'll see if we can ever see the label. And I'm sure people ask him every time he posts a new piece. What pencil do you use? What's that brush? <laughs> but yeah, you know, he's got a really, really interesting line. I what, what I was remarking about in the other video is it's rare that his lines don't have sometimes like four waggles. Like, you know, you draw like a bird's wing, but look at this. It curves once, it curves twice, it curves another time and another time. But he'll do that with fingers. He'll do that with a pant leg. He's got a very, very wobbly line. So it's really, really interesting to see. Like a normal inker on this would look weird because it would tighten it up so much and it would pull it in such a... Uh, like, not sterile, but like kind of a more generic map. Face is great. Yeah, I, f I found seeing his work very, it's very inspiring, but it's just, man, it's so well done. It's like seeing classical music or something. <laughs> just lots of very, very cool armor designs, cool skulls on them and stuff like that. It's always fun to see. Traditional paintings, he's got um, quite a few on his Instagram. In fact, if you do like his stuff and you, you are, are or are not following him on Instagram, you have a couple of options. He's on Instagram, and I believe he's on TikTok. Uh, he posts a lot of videos, a lot of drawing videos. So um, I I didn't spend time pulling a bunch of like drawing videos for this, but uh, you can definitely find tons and tons of videos of him actually drawing. So it might be interesting for you to see how he goes through the process a bit more. He's actually a bike rider, so I, 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 although I've seen him, he can look different depending on I like I, I picture three versions of Carl. Carl when he looks a little more tore up. Carl when he's clean shaven, and then bike Carl. <laughs> I don't know him, but I'm just saying that like, um, yeah, like he, he's he's got like a few different appearances, so. Uh, this could actually be a self portrait cuz he he had some photos of him riding a bike and he looks he looks like he could have almost been like a pro bike biker this is nice <coughs> that's definitely not him although maybe it is <laughs> I don't know. he has kind of blondish hair so i'm thinking that's not him it's a nice painting though he does this really interesting thing with his paints where he will always have like some drippy or splatter kind of flying off of the piece pretty cool From what I can tell, Carl is left-handed, but he's got um, a thing that he does where he'll draw with both hands at once. I don't know if I have any photos of, of him doing it, but again, you can find video of him doing it, but uh, I was aware that he did it. 
Um, but uh, I wasn't sure if he was right-handed or left-handed naturally, but it looks to me that when he's just drawing, this almost reminds me of there's Mike Butkus has got a few pieces that have a little bit of this vibe. Um, I, I wasn't sure what his natural like main hand is, but it looked to be his left hand. I didn't really notice when I saw him drawing in person. He's done quite a few of these pieces with like like really good like war. Some are more like fantasy, like mi like medieval fantasy. This one looks like it's got more of a sci-fi slant. I don't know the um, the IP that this is. Someone else might be able to spot what it is. I'm I'm not familiar with what this might be. But the the designs are really really cool. Is it? Warhammer? God dang. That's just nuts. We're pretty lucky to have people this skilled that will draw this kind of fun material. Sounds funny to say, but like, I mean, he could easily just be doing like fine art or, you know stuff that's not like dudes with big guns in the forest fighting you know skull cybernetic monsters <laughs> or whatever i mean it's like drawing this like a convention or something can you imagine Carl, can I get a sketch? He's like, yeah, come back in like 45 minutes. And then you come back and this is like waiting for you. Absolutely crazy. It's like magic. Oh, man, that's great. <laughs> Look at the guy's face. I don't even think, like, I don't, like, I'm assuming this is done. This looks like it's actually done in a sketchbook. So you can see the, the, the seam. But um, I wouldn't erase this. I mean, the pencil lines, I think, kind of add some sort of something to it. And I mean, it would look fine erased, but but uh, it looks really cool with the pencil line still in it. Yeah, so you can see he's drawn with his left hand. Is this Kratos? Kind of looks like Kratos. It may not be, though. I don't think Kratos has this. I'm gonna say no. This is this is cool. So one of the things when I did the other video was I I I did wish that sometimes there was more color pieces from him because his color stuff is actually quite nice and um, fun to see. It's like a nice kind of variety of when you see his color pieces. This is really nice. God, man. He just draws everything good. The gun is cool. These pouches are cool. They look functional. Her armor is neat. He draws good monkeys on bikes. <laughs> it's Shea Gorilla Guevara. <laughs> God dang. Like digital painting. It's an interesting design. God, man, I love art. He's doing a little of the smudge thing. It's funny. He he puts it in weird spots, and I I I don't know if that's intentional when he put it there. But I noticed it on um, a couple of the other pieces, and they they were definitely in weird they were in weird spots where I kind of. I didn't mention it because I wasn't, I couldn't really pin it down. I'm thinking that might be a mistake. It doesn't look bad. I mean, this, this is clearly on purpose. I mean, this may be on purpose, but yeah, some of his smudging, I was like, oh, it's kind of a weird spot. Man, that is so good. Jesus. And this looks like it might be acrylic, or not. Not. I'm not saying it's necessarily acrylic. Excuse me. What I mean is, this is looks a tr traditional. I don't know what what medium it is, but all this because you can see the pencil and kind of whatever. But man, it's good. Jeez. This is 
cute. But you can see where Carl kind of fits into the Tarada, Kim Jong-gi sort of um, aesthetic. You know, they're, they all have sort of like, they're like part of one hive mind in some ways. There's more too. I th I saw a couple of I, I saw one artist in particular. Not even the other. I saw this in the thumbnail, and it reminded me of like a Phil Hale piece. Um, uh, I saw a new artist, new artist, new to me, I should say, uh, within the last week that kind of was doing a Kim, a Kim Jong Gi thing, and I was interested to see where that goes for them. But there's I, I don't want to call it a void, but you know what I mean, like. He established something that I think people really enjoy. Artists, you know, want to aspire to it. Uh, there's a fan base there for it. So it's like, you know, you have people kind of doing that thing. Here's one of his two hand drawings. It's pretty impressive. I, 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 I mean, I, it's not a thing that I would probably even consider doing. Maybe just to try it would be interesting. But I think it would take a little while to develop, so... I did notice though when he does them that they're generally front views and I, I wouldn't say like they're symmetrical across the board but he, he does tend to go for that a little bit but I'm sure over time he should be able to develop where he could do like a standing pose where someone's in a more you know something more turn three quarter view where the one arm is doing something else doesn't seem like it would be impossible. So he's got smudging on this one, but it's it's in places that where it makes sense. More sense. <laughs> Part's funny. Oh man, that's cool. I noticed one of the soldiers that he drew a few pages back had a little bit of like a desert vibe to it, but it doesn't look like it was from the same um, era. He looked more like a modern day soldier. That's really good. Damn. Anyone own a Carl Kopensky drawing? I bet there's someone someone will have one. It's nice. I mentioned in the other video too that that uh, his sur superhero body types are pretty interesting. They look like um, kind of like nineteen fifties, nineteen sixties athletes. They have very like human body sizes. They're a little like um, kind of like old. It's like body types, in my opinion, over the last seventy years have evolved. People are like more tall. And as you get back into like the 40s and 50s and 60s and stuff like that, people were shorter and they kind of had different, like slightly different builds. His his heroes, like his Batman, stuff like that, they're all they all feel a little shorter and a little more like they would be like um, wrestlers or something. It's kind of interesting. This is a, like a screenshot from one of his videos. Oh, yeah. This looked traditional to me. Pretty impressive. It's a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. That looks like to do all these edges and angles on the robot bodies or whatever these are, Max, would be crazy. I'm gonna move my phone so if it keeps buzzing, it doesn't make sound in the mic. This is nice. But yeah, you can follow him at TikTok at Carl Kopinski on Instagram. He's that. But I'll have links. Link, link, link. I think this might be the last piece, is it? No. This was the first piece. It was funny when I when I originally saw this piece. It, his hand. 
um, is almost hard to see. Not not in his hand, but like this, you don't really notice it, and it, it feels small. Like his arm feels small compared to the the robust kind of roundness of the body. But yeah, it's an interesting silhouette because it it reads like he's missing his arm just for a split second. Pretty cool skull, skull face. He had this piece on his um, Instagram a lot. Oh, let me do that. That's pretty creepy. Look at that. Oh, it's just savage. <laughs> it's really interesting if you just follow this right here, like how many times he swipes through this area. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, like twelve loops. Like he's just like builds it, builds it, builds it, builds it, builds it. Builds it. And keeps like wrapping it around. It's really wild. Hello, monkey man. Warm up sketches. Here we go. His warm up sketches are like better than most people's, like, <laughs> slaved on it for nine hours <laughs> drawings. That's cool. That's crazy. I don't know why that was thumbnail was so small. Okay, so that's it. Um, I'm going to be live tonight on YouTube, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 p.m. East Coast. We're doing our independent, create your own, self published underground comic show. We're going to be looking at Wally Wood's collective book called Wit's End. has artists like Frazetta, Al Williamson, Wally, Jeffrey Catherine Jones, Bernie Wrightson, Don Martin, all of his pals. And it was a no company thing. They didn't want to deal with any big corporations, editors, none of that. He was at his wit's end. So, okay, join us tonight. It's going to be fun with James Windsor Smith, the illustrious James Windsor Smith, and Jerk Comics, who is, in my opinion, uh, an encyclopedia of very, very good comic book information. I just honestly want to sit back and listen to hear what he has to say. So I created a show around that concept. No, it wasn't exactly why. But um, I knew he would be awesome. And he is. So, okay, you guys have a great day. Between James and, and Jerk, we'll get the show fired up. And uh, it should be very enjoyable. Some great art and really, really interesting background on, on it. And uh, honestly, there was some Frazetta stuff I had never seen. I'm not even kidding. I saw the piece and I was like, I've literally never seen that before. So it was pretty cool. So, all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Tonight, not later. <laughs>